Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch League. I'm Mitch Leslie here with Matthew Morello, and again, a countdown cup is ticking along. Today has been a reckoning for the underpowered and underprepared teams. And Matt, this next match may look similar. It's San Francisco takes on Boston. Yeah, well, look, we haven't had two pretty matches thus far. I don't know <laughs> if this one's going to be much better. To, uh, I think it's going to be, though, a display from the shock about how good this team is. They do lose uh, to the Paris Eternal, but I, I still believe that San Francisco is the best team in North America. Yeah, San Francisco have built uh, some big winning streaks so far through this season, but theirs was snapped in the finals of the Summer Showdown. Uh, we heard from the team. Uh, we, we actually took some time and, and talked to Moth and said, look, you know, what was behind this loss? Because it's so uncharacteristic. And he had a couple things to say about why San Francisco couldn't go the distance in the summer showdown. Uh, going into the summer showdown, we felt we could uh, pull off a win playing a lot of tracer comps, even though we knew uh, Genji was really overpowered and uh, was probably the meta and, and turned out to be the dominant pick the entire time. So. Uh, that, that ended up not going our way, even though it was uh, a couple of really close uh, fights that could have gone either way and uh, could have uh, brought us to the finals, but didn't. So going into the next set of games, we're focusing a lot more on uh, Genji compositions and uh, seeing what we can do with those. It's interesting how a team's take on the meta can kind of uh, you know affect things, especially right now when... Uh, what is this? Yeah, so oh, we're taking no, a look no, at no, the, no. Uh, the San Francisco <laughs> lineup, and uh, you're seeing that correctly. That is super in <laughs> in the damage dealer role. Uh, no, no, Smurf no, and Choi, no, no, Smurf no. and Choi are in at tanks. Violet and Twilight. Uh, that new support line, really, is we haven't seen Moth that much as Lucio's kind of fallen out. Uh, and super in is uh, DPS. So this will uh, this will be a thing. Oh my, oh God. All right, well, um, okay. He hasn't played Super. much of it. No, uh, so I think the only time Super has ever played DPS in official matches was um, before Roll Lock, uh, and it was only <laughs> on Stalling Heroes. There was probably plenty of May played in there. Uh, so three minutes uh, uh, on all combined damage heroes. Yeah. That, oh God. Um, yeah, you would think it's like a May Tracer, like coming out of the spawn type minutes. of scenarios. Oh, okay. Well, Super has been playing a little bit uh, of Genji on stream, but there are a lot of DPS players that have, or, or Flex uh, tank players that have opinions about this as well. <laughs> God's uh, definitely cutting to the core of the issue here as well. He definitely believes Super should just be holding Mouse 1 for the boys, but Super has other plans today. Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> look... If you're the boss in Uprising and you see this, you got to come out really hard. I mean, even Krusty kind of agrees with gods, right? Like, uh, it, 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 you can't allow Super to play DPS and get get the dub here. Although, uh, no, I was going to say putting bias aside, but this is being completely biased. I'd love to see Super really excel on this because I think it would just be hilarious and uh, just a great personality for the seed. We can take a look at the Boston starters. Uh, nothing really too different. Uh, Fusions, Punk, Halo, Myungbung, Color Hex, and Jerry. Yeah, so the Boston Uprising now, of course, they, I mean, they're 2-13 and 13 in the season so far. They uh, yeah. haven't actually played against the Shock yet this year. This is the first match, uh, I believe, in the 2020 season, but, I mean, with the Boston, what, they're on uh, a fairly lengthy loss streak there as well, and, you know, losing uh, in their, their mo most recent matches, matches to... Um, to Washington and to Vancouver. So they are pretty solidly chilling uh, at the bottom of the barrel at the moment uh, with a 7.1% Not where you want to be chilling. A 7.1% win rate on assault maps in general. So keep an eye out for Hanamura, but coming up first is going to be Oasis, Matt. I'm, I mean, that's that's pretty bad. 7% uh, you know, win rate. 7% uh, seven. Seven, seven is... It, it's horrible. Uh, we, we gotta... You gotta show some signs of life in this one. We've seen Boston... Uh, do well against uh, some teams. I believe we casted the one where they beat the Gladiators. Uh, that, look, that's true. They are zero win six for the season on Oasis, though. So yet to find a win. But will it be against the Super DPS? Now, what will the yeah. Super DPS be? We talked about maybe uh, you know being a nutty Genji player, but there's uh, plenty of options here. I mean, yeah, there, there are uh, the Super Doom Fist is available. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> he could have just given us an appetizer and played more Wrecking Ball for us, right? He could have just, like, eased just into this. 
Uh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, who knows? Uh, you may never see this again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, a one-off. Uh, or it could be a regular special. occurrence. If hydration can go from flex DPS to tank, why can't hydration super go? Hydration was picked up as a tank Why can't super go from tank to flex oh. DPS? Flame literally said the hydration was picked up to be a tank player, or at least a flex tank player. And so maybe like, coming into the season, they said super is going to be a DPS player. This narrative about him uh, not being a tank player is, is, is very old to me. Super... Oh, oh, it's the Genji! Super, Hell you mad yeah. man! I love it. I, uh, get, just feed me more of this. I mean, Super, I mean, this is about to be feeding, Matt. Uh, although I actually don't know which side it's going to come from here. So, Super, uh, so, a known Reinhardt player now on the Genji. He's been playing it a bunch on stream. Oh, uh, I don't and, care. And, and he's had success playing it on stream. <laughs> That's a what a nothing burger. Super's going to play around in the middle of the map to start with Colorhex. I mean, he will be determined not to allow Super to put him to shame. And that would entail basically getting that, killed well, him he, at all. He, Super's got a... He, he's closer to Blade than uh, Colorhex is. All right. Quicker than AKM as well, but doesn't get any kill involvements uh, so far. It's been Striker doing most of the heavy lifting with three final blows early on. Uh, you can't <laughs> be doing that to my boy Jerry. I mean, you, you can. I mean, they're, they're sitting on him at this point as... Uh, Th th this point as well is very difficult to get back. So now that Boston's giving it up to San Francisco, uh, they're in a world of trouble already. Uh, so you see Super there on the high ground. <laughs> I, like I, I want to see a blade. Oh! oh! He's getting set the heck down by Myungbog across the map. <laughs> All right, That's a super. bit unlucky. That's a bit unlucky. Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll put that one down to battle. I feel like I've walked into lower Karazhan right now. It's like some bizarro world where nothing makes sense. So it's a five-man uh, setup here for the San Francisco Shock right now. And the dive has begun. The uprise will want to try and close the gap a little bit. And Smurf has already gone down. That just leaves Choi Kobin, who's been harassed this entire time by Jerry, who want to leave a pulse bomb a gift for Super. Who didn't fall into it. Jerry goes down to striker, though. So still DPS is in play for San Francisco, Matthew. Well, this is what I mean about how difficult it is to take this point back. You get the first pickoff for Boston, and now you're already out. Uh, not even a chance to really take the point. So now we'll have Dragon Blades for both teams online. Uh, support ultimates as well. It's time. So really, it's just one more fight for the Shock to win this. It's time for Cold Steel and an even colder look from Super. Dragonblade available. Now, uh, could be paired with Transcendence aggressively if Twilight wants to try and back him up. I would leave him out to uh, to dry, to be honest, and just see what he can get done on his own. Yumbong keeps tabs on him with the Discord Orb right now, Matt. Super. Plays it safe for the time being. Self Destruct goes in. Super wants to chase uh, down Punk for the time being, who's being healed by Transcendence. Yeah, they got the Transcendence out of Boston. Here we go. This is going to be the Blade. Super pulls the Blade. Nowhere to go. Has a dash available, but opts not to use it. Is he a decoy, or is it something more devious than that? A couple slashes he gets on towards Fusion to use his Primal Rage, because no one wants to die to Super as Genji. Now Color Hex gets the Dragon Blade, but he's forced into a deflate early on, oh. and there it is! Super gets the kill on Color Hex. Assist, of course, by Twilight. One kill is all it takes. San Francisco at 99 to zero. It's very odd to be saying Super Genji, but I mean, look at how he's played in this. He just used a blade. He's halfway to another one. Uh, it's been it's been quite good. Quite yeah. surprised. Hey, look, it's striking here, but off the point, our Boston push, and guess what? Super ends around with a quarter of his team's damage, Matt. He's playing very yeah. safe. If he's actually he's got some good accuracy on the shurikens. Thirty percent isn't bad when you're normally just spamming them. No, is uh, in a weird way, it's like okay, he's he's a tank coming over and playing Genji. Uh, maybe they have a little bit of an understanding of how to coordinate their dives a little bit between him, Smurf, and Choi. Uh, that he's worked with Choi pretty extensively and understands the tank position. Uh, it, it is still odd to see, not gonna lie, but. Uh, well, I want to see if he's able to flex over to anything else. Play me Kree, you won't. Seem to start with here. I think he just needs to this play This will be Genji again. again, yeah. There, I mean, why why would you switch off of it? No reason not to. And you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? It's super uh, showed us uh, an interesting style of Genji where you really don't take too many risks. You sit and you play for Blade, and then you pull the Blade out, and then you stand there. It's like T-posing on someone, right? No one wants to come near you. I mean, you got Dragon Blade, right? No one's going to mess with you anyway. Super is just emanating this machismo right now, and the Uprising are too afraid to test the waters. Yeah, I mean, the point of that blade, 
uh, was to just to deter players from coming to the point because they triggered OT. So if he dives in, they can maybe just kind of move around him, get to the point to keep OT going. Uh, just wanted to waste some time, but the shock have the high ground here. So uh, you see Punk's getting really oh, low. They're going to nice. get a DMAC on him. He had a roll start for nothing. Matt Twilight sends a parting gift for Punk and he's deep suited in a pretty average position. Nice deep flag from Color Hex though. He's able to punish Twilight. His accuracy being used against him, but Super again gets the counter kill with the Genji. Boston will start in control of the point, and Troy may just go for a drink. Yes, uh, well, actually, he's still alive. It looks like he actually oh, he made it back. all the way around. Yeah, he made it all the way around, and Punk now is gonna... He'll probably make it back in time for the next fight. Maybe, like, a little bit delayed, but shouldn't make that much of a difference. Uh, super. You know, building up towards that blade rather quickly yet again in comparison to Color Hex. It's like a, it's kind of crazy to say, but he's been able to build up that blade quite nicely. Damn. San Francisco setting up for another dive, but they lose Violet pretty early on in the piece, and Twilight was already low by the time Jerry came a calling. And Super will be headed back to sport awfully quick. San Francisco just don't get off on the right foot to begin that fight. Yeah, losing uh, one of your supports right at the beginning, not going to be able to get much of anything going after that. So it's quite interesting to see Violet on the on the Brig and Twilight on the Zen. Uh, you know, you kind of think of Violet as one of like the best Zens, as all well, Twilight, obviously. I know with the Titans last year, just an incredible player. So uh, Super looks like he's setting up here, potentially coming from the outside with a blade. A this is very crafty, Matt. Super it's a nice position. Around. Violet eats a pulse bomb though early on. Super still goes uh, in and finds Mion moment it's a Dragon Blade from Color Hex. Super Super's got two from his blade. Yeah, he actually dashes in, doesn't have to bl Oh no. He bladed after getting two kills and then just got hit in the head by Jerry. Striker Lou's still alive. It has a pulse bomb, drops onto the mini health pack. Boston is still in control of the point, but now is Smurf's primal rage. There might be something to be done here. Smurf yeah. didn't even realize he'd landed on Jerry and gets rid of him now at the shock in position. Well, what it's, it, it's Super, Smurf, and Striker. Uh, Super's able to take out both supports, and then the Primal Rage keeps Smurf alive. Striker, which is great survivability on the Tracer alone, and they're able to flip the point. Uh, so now the Shock actually have a chance, because look at that, they're going to have both support ults here. They're going to have a self-destruct. Oh, well, and you won't even get a fight here if you're Boston, because you lose Young Bung from a distance. This is bad, though, for Boston, because it allows uh, Smurf to start getting towards another Primal, Super to get some more ult charge as well. This is what playing the dive composition with the uh, Zen is going to provide, though. You need to be very careful trying to set up. A lot of teams get caught on the wrong foot. Because there aren't shields. They have to break line of sight. And if they peek out like Myeongbong did there to try and find a kill, they in turn put themselves at risk of falling foul of the exact same play. Boston have a lot of ults, so does San Francisco. So expect this next fight to be a little messy. San Francisco want to try and come out ahead in the ult usage here, and that's a good start. They force the Transcendence immediately out of Myeongbong with a Pulse Bomb. And Striker is now set up to actually move into the fight undetected. And they're going to have their rally last a little bit longer here. The Shock, you see Violet still having the effects of the rally, as though it drops there. Twilight will have the Transcendence to extend this more for the Shock. Fusion's trying to push forward now, at least towards the back line here, but Super's found two. Halo Myeongbong go down again. He's found both supports once more in this fight. He came into this fight way behind Color Hex in terms of ult charge, and they are even now. Now, in terms of their damage across the series, they differ by about 500 between the two, so not huge, and uh, Super is faster at charging his ultimate by about 14 seconds. So that's out of a total of, like, you know, one and a half, sort of one minute, 45 seconds. Can so. he get a big blade here, though, to close it out? No support ults for boss in here. Super comes in off the bench, a super sub in every sense of the time, oh, and he gets two and what? one! Super's out of control! At every position, this man is laying down the domination. Halo Myumbo walk into the meat grinder. That's a bit of a macabre into the round for the Boston Uprising, but that's what you get. The San Francisco Shock are not interested in preserving your pride at all. Punk is down, Smurf makes the heavy landing, and that'll be the first map done. The weirdest experiment of our time. And Gilmore, I'm including Gilmore Josh shaving his eyebrows has concluded with a win for San Francisco. Get, let, let me vote for the Roll Stars right now. I'm putting Super as a damage dealer Roll Star. First, uh, uh, as he gets played in the game of this as well, is uh, look, it is very odd. It is very odd. We've seen some weird stuff in the Overwatch League the first two years, right? Uh, 
Uh, we, we've seen DPS players go to main tank. Uh, we've, we've seen them become supports. Uh, we haven't seen tanks become damage dealers, though. <laughs> uh, that's the one kind of thing we, we oh. haven't seen that much of. Uh, but this actually looked quite good. 25% uh, of uh, the team's hero damage. Yeah, Super did great. Eight final blows, four deaths, and you're right, about a quarter of his team's damage. So in general, uh, a really solid performance for Genji, which, you know, right now isn't able to pair up with Nano Boost and Supercharger, right? They're both not available for selection. So you're saying uh, he would only be stronger? Yes, I'm saying he would only be stronger. And there was some aggressive transcendence use from Twilight there, but in general, Super did a fantastic job of shutting down Halo and Myeonbong multiple times. I'm very impressed. I, I, I wasn't really intending to take this seriously, but we might actually have to now. So we head into our first map break with San Francisco up 1-0 in an unorthodox fashion. And let's see what the Dreaded Assault map holds for the Uprising. They really need to lift in this series. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. How do you guys think about Super Genji? Super Genji? My team is from GG. I'm better than Super Genji. <laughs> Every time I, I get a six-man blade and scrims on Genji, but I guess it's just Super's turn because his leadership on the hero is better. Super Genji? What? Super Genji? What? Super Genji? <laughs> 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 Okay, so fair banter, Matt. Fair yeah. enough. But you, what you said to me over the break was that actually there was internal tryouts on the San Francisco Shock to sort of yeah identify their Genji player. Uh, from from what it sounds like, uh, they they were hey we need Genji options. Let's try people out. Super probably said that, like hey I've been practicing it <laughs> or I've been playing it on stream. Uh, but I do think it's kind of good, though, that this San Francisco organization kind of thinks outside the box, because a lot of the players in the league, they, they play a ton of Overwatch on stream, they play a lot of Overwatch in general, 
Uh, they have experience on other heroes, just not at the Overwatch League level. But it, it keeps somebody like super motivated, right, to be involved with the team if there's a way for him back into the lineup that's not in the tank position. Listen, Matt, this stat here, uh, I mean, Super is actually right now, now we'd have to blow his stats up. We'd actually have to extrapolate them, right? But he's uh, sitting at like the 10 final blows per 10 minute mark right now on, on the Genji. So that's uh, an extremely good start. And I think out of respect for uh, the Uprising, we, we, we're not really going to show a head to head game. Genji uh, lineup for you now, uh, but it's pretty clear to see that you know, Super did, you know, we wanted to meme on it here, but the reason why San Francisco looked so dominant was actually Super just killing backliners over and over and over again. So he did right. actually, actually did a very good job. I really just and want to meme on Matthew Delisi this entire broadcast. And it's legit. Yeah. It's legit. And if, and if, if you were Boston and you were kind of upset about it or whatnot, just beat it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a main tank player coming in to play DPS. Yep. If, if if they're beating you with it and he's playing this well, it's not really you know, BM. Uh, it's just a, a shock kind of looked down their roster and said, who is the best equipped to play Genji right now? And if this is the option, then that's the option. Uh, I do think they deserve some credit uh, because it is a bold choice uh, in terms of who who the Genji player is. Sure. And I'm sure they knew that there was going to be a ton of pressure on Super, a ton of pressure for them to play well uh, in this type of scenario. And at least so far, they've looked good. So from Oasis, which uh, was not a control map. Now, control is actually um, uh, the Uprising's best map type, but Oasis is one that they hadn't actually managed to win yet. We go on to Hanamura yeah. here, which is... Um, Boston have managed to get a win on it this uh, this season so far, but uh, the Shock are 7-0, and zero, uh, and, and a lot of their maps, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty much undefeated. So again, another huge challenge for the Uprising. Again, they're going to have to answer the, uh, the Super Genji, potentially. Uh, it'll be a little bit different um, I, than it was, I guess, on control. Work. I will say as well, he doesn't, like the way he played Genji is actually kind of, I don't want to say perfect for the team because there's a lot of other ways you can kind of go out playing the hero. But uh, with how good Striker, perfect, Smurf, Matt. with how good Striker, Smurf, and Trayovin are, he doesn't need to be the one that initiates, right? Like for, you look at like the Toronto Defiant and Agilities is like the playmaker, right? Going in there, trying to get the, the party started. He doesn't have to do that here on the shock. Like he doesn't need to be that type of player. Maybe if he has blade, he does, but that's only, uh, you know, every every minute and a half or so, right? Uh, he doesn't need to do that. He just needs to play the hero at a high level and when he needs to make an impact, make the impact. And that's exactly what he did on control. Let's see how you play it on Hanamura. This is a little bit trickier to play <laughs> uh, than to play it on like a control type of game mode. Just imagine being architect right now over at Hangzhou being like, Wait, you dropped me, and your replacement for me on Genji is super. I, I don't blame him for uh, hitting the face palm here, but San Francisco, you know, like they, they're still allowing Striker to do a lot of the heavy lifting and Troy Hoban to really keep things under control. Super has a lot of space, and that's a great way to set a player so, up for success. So they want to try and force them off of this dive by playing Reaper. Right, uh, Reaper, Moira, Lucio. Get a real brawl comp going. Get close to the Winston. Make it very difficult for these flankers to go in and make plays. Uh, this will probably be... It, look, if Boston can't win here, uh, they're, in, they're in a lot of trouble. I mean, this is a composition where they should be able to neutralize some of the effects of the dive. Yeah, Smurf just gets ruined by the Reaper damage at the start of the fight there. And that's kind of the idea to shut down this dive setup that San Francisco are bringing. And if that doesn't work, you know, what do we see from Super? Color Hex right now, just playing safe. The Uprising have control of the points, so there's no need to dig any deeper. But it's a Coalescence already out from Yonbong here. And Jerry and Halo get involved in some of these kills. Super eventually goes down, and the Shock, yeah, they struggle against this sort of countering composition here. And they're going to have to ask for a lot from Striker to stay in the fight. I, I don't think they're going to be able to stay in the fight. Uh, with the way it looks like right now, they're going to have to give up point A. Violet will jump on, he'll fall off rather quickly. And that's a pretty good first point take there for Boston, and this is a good adjustment. But they saw that Super was still going to be in the game. We've only seen him play Genji thus far. That's all, uh, you know, kind of the, the talking and rumor has been about. Try and force him off of it. Try and force the Shock off of this dive comp. Pulse Bomb is available for Striker here, so this will be a little bit treacherous for the Uprising as they try and move up, and that one is a stick. Color Hex dashes forward there, but Super gets involved, gets rid of Mionbong, and again, it's a, I guess it's a pincer assault there as Striker tries to come in from the back line. Jerry teleports out. He's going to be chased down by Super, though. He's going to become some extra old percentage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know! Super. I, I, I also want to say, it's just fun <laughs> to see Super play again. 
Uh, he's just a great personality. Uh, I mean, his stream's super entertaining as well. Just being able to see him get back in the game. Yeah, you know, you know if he wins this and keeps this play going, uh, he, he's going to have a lot to say after this one. Yeah, uh, and justifiably so here, considering that uh, I think out of his playtime, 280 hours has been on main tank. Three minutes has been on DPS in the in the league. So that speaks for itself, but I'm quite sure Super will have some uh, things to add to that. Dragon Blade's available for him right now. Jerry also has hit that Death Blossom here. And there's a Colossus for Mjombox. So this is a little bit dangerous for San Francisco to fully commit to right now. They open up with the Gravitic Flux, though. And here's that Coalescent. Smurf has to jump away. Trojoven just trying to absorb as much damage as he can with that Kinetic Grasp. But he's going to get caught in the Flux himself. Super now for the Blade. But the opponents are all hit with the beam. So there's no kills for Super to find with the Blade. But it's after the fact that he really needs to switch on. Two tanks on the point right now, but the Shocks still have the numbers to work in from the outside. Fusions tries to go for a Shadow, but Jerry finds two here with the Death Blossom. Youngbong gets rid of Super, and that Wrecking Ball from Troy is in deep trouble. When Reaper's front and center, it's very hard for the Shock to have any point time at all. Yeah, exactly. When the Reaper gets close to the Winston, it's almost impossible to do anything. Super actually pulls the Blade out there. It's a good sound barrier, though, from Halo. Is the sound barrier really makes a difference there, allowing everybody from Boston to stay alive potentially through that? Because uh, he goes up, he gets a good wall climb, then starts to swing onto Punk while he's using the Gravitic Flux. If the if the barrier is not there, he might be able to get that kill, which could change the tide in that fight. Uh, not having the Sigma there on the point as well as the Reinhardt and the Reaper, uh, but still Boston with a good attack. They did a bunch of different things compositionally and positionally to try and neutralize the dive composition, and it worked out. This is, uh, this, this is a reasonable composition switch for Boston, right? I mean, they go for the safest backline possible. Right? Moira yeah. and Lucio both able to stave off flankers like Genji and Tracer. Whether it's Fade or whether they're booped away, uh, it's easy for them to sort of stay where they need to be in these fights. And, of course, the Reaper just makes it really unpleasant. Smurf doesn't want to... It's like the first day at school. He doesn't want to go in, but he has no choice, right? And you see him having to play differently no, uh... to avoid just getting ruined by the Reaper. I will say, though, if you're the Shock, you can probably change this up. And although we haven't seen Super play it, uh, I, I wouldn't say Reaper is the most challenging hero to play. Right. Uh, if you can play Genji, you should be able to play Reaper. It's a mindset thing, I think, is actually uh, the biggest thing uh, that can be challenging with Reaper. Knowing how aggressive you want to be, sometimes you just want to sit inside your, you know, the core of your team and, and play reactively, which is... How Boston were able to punish Smurf so badly earlier on. Will be Genji Tracer though again. The Boston Uprising now they go with Brig Petit. So complete mix up on supports for them. And going to something that's very standard here when they want to try and play a two part defense with the Sigma on the off angle here that Super wants to pressure. Yeah, say so they jump right on top of Punk. And that's going to be an early immortality field here used by the Boston Uprising. You don't want to have to be forced to use it. I know within the first 10 seconds of a fight, especially when the dive wasn't even really coming in that hard, it just Punk gets attacked so fast from multiple angles, they have to use it. Yeah, it had to be used because Punk was essentially on his own without that immortality field, right? So easy, the shot, all they have to do is just apply a little bit of pressure to the Sigma. They force the key cooldowns out of the Uprising, they disengage for a breath, and then push in, they lose no one in that fight. I mean, no. that really just shows that they have a almost natural instinct uh, for dealing with this composition. So what do you do now if you're boss? Do you stay on this? Uh, do you go over to Reaper? Uh, the, the type of scenario to try and really stop this dive. Do you see, look at the damage coming down from yep. all directions here. Is uh, Smurf, he was very low, but there was no opportunity for Boston to focus him down. And now San Francisco will probably still try and press in from that high ground. Striker may have gone far left uh, with his blinks. Or maybe he's just up on the left side of the platform. Either way, this is huge. San Francisco already have that ledge available to them, that central one. Now they can work on the high ground, but they sort of fake it, dive high. I mean, Super dashes through and they work towards the low ground now. They want to pressure Jerry, but that's fantastic Bob use there to knock Smurf up as soon as he lands. Yeah, and a striker tries to get into the back line and he gets taken out, but it's going to be Super with the blade. He gets a one. Looking for more on the point. They may be able to live on through this and take oh, I it. I mean, this is just... Oh. Come on! <laughs> San Francisco, they bank plenty of ultimates in the first fight. It's a pretty standard snowball uh, engagement. 
San Francisco only have to make a couple of strategic decisions throughout this round. The first one is when to disengage when the immortality field is used on the first point. The second is to press Q and win the round. I don't get why they 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 have success with the Reaper, and it's probably it's a bit harder to play it on defense. Uh, but you know that the shock are most likely not going to. What are they going to change? Like striker could play Ash. Like are you are you going to be in a losing scenario there? Uh, if you're Boston, I, I feel like they could have played this brawly type of style and just challenged them on the point uh, every time. I mean. Boston, they, they made a good push. There's no doubt about it. They they yeah. played an anti-dive composition. looked really good. I mean... I mean you didn't play any defense. Who the hell cares about your offense? Well, the problem for them is... Okay, so playing Brig Batiste on defense here, like, it's not easy because you're not very mobile as a composition. And you are... You, the point is, is you, you cover off both entry points, right? You cover main off, uh, and then you use a Sigma on the right-hand side. If one of but those I, parts of your comp gets pressured too hard, and you fall apart, then you start a fight playing 3v6. But against a real strong dive, I don't think you can play the Sigma on that off angle. It's just going to be way too much burst damage. And then you saw your force back to the point sure. straight away, and your force to use immortality for I would rather away. watch Boston play point with this comp on defense. Yes, the same. Uh, play, I, point, I play point with double shield and, and the Reaper. I mean, you got you give a lot more space, right? Which means you can be flanked, but, but who cares? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. It's a Discord orb that really makes life hard for Punk there. And, can't uh, kinetic grasp uh, a a swift strike there, the dash through from Genji, just like we can't grasp uh, super's dominance on this hero right now. If, if you the, if you took the, the super's name off of the, the little graphic though, and you were like, uh, the, the, it, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is like either oh, cool. like Arc Attack Welcome or back, Rascal Arc or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's just the fact that it's super, which is quite odd. Uh, they're going to use a coalescence here to try and uh, super is playing safe. Yeah, right? towards the point. He is playing quite safe. And yeah, but, with, really uh, but he doesn't need to play. He doesn't need yeah. to play like, like a, a, a madman. But so many Genjis play that hyper aggressive style when they don't necessarily have to either, right? Super just really wants to play on the Discord orb. He's following that purple puddle as often as he can. See the blade? It's just a statement blade. Like, yeah, I got this. I got some Hans. I got some Hanzo Has Hattori silverware here. You know what I mean? I got this from a set of Kill Bill Bros. Real. Yes. I was like, well, maybe the blades, we, we, we can we can get a little work on those during the week. But... <laughs> we can sharpen them up a bit, Matt, maybe. Yeah. All right. Striker's going to pulse bomb here, though, but uh, I don't know if he really has to use it. Okay, that's just a flare. Oh! Oh, my! <laughs> he was going for Jerry, and Milbon yeah. just happened to cross the thing. Milbon came out of a fade on top of the pulse bomb. That's so unfortunate, but Boston... Oh, dear. I mean, they've got the egg on their face, but they're, they're lacking the rest of the... The components for the ramen right, recipe so, they're hoping for here. And Boston has a blade and coalescence. If the fight goes long enough, they'll end up having a sound barrier here. But Twilight with the Transcendence will be huge against this blade. Halo Discorded right now. Twilight going to go for the Transcendence here. The Shock want to go aggressive on this last little hole. That's how they make the dive work. It look good. Super. I mean, just playing back on the point. Fusions gets through the door. Kalahex has a beat and a Where blade. He has here? to find a kill, but he gets a Cretan. Oh, okay. You know, I just wipe wipe this match wipe wipe this map from my memory. Just look, lobotomize it out of me, man. <laughs> it's brutal. Uh, super will get a blade I don't here to clean it out. Don't want to anymore. Super finds the blade kill on Jerry, and the Wrecking Ball now is going to be in trouble for the uprising. There's not much fusions can do now after switching off Reinhardt, and that is the round over. The shock at three minutes and twenty to get one tick on point A. And really, I was going to say, and really good for the shock. They don't give up a tick. It uh, looked like potentially there they were going to be in some trouble to give up a, a tick, but uh, Violet in the chat is the Super Genji good GG Color Hex providing some insight that uh, it is the Genji difference. Oh, man. Is, uh, look, it, as much as I think there's pressure on uh, Super to play well, there's equally amount of pressure on Boston not to lose, right? Uh, think about the past, where we would see the the bumzo come out, right? The bumzo, no, nobody, nobody wanted to fall victim to the bumzo, uh, <laughs> and and we saw a lot of teams they they would. Uh, nobody probably. Well, there's a lot of teams that are probably like, oh man, we don't want to play against the shock because if they play super on Genji and they look good and they win, that's all we're gonna hear about forever. Uh, and I and I do think. It, 
I think you're going to see more of this. As weird as it sounds, uh, it, it looks to be a really good comp for the Shock. Uh, you know, Smurf on the Winston, Striker on Tracer is a great combo. Uh, two of their best heroes. Choi can play uh, whether it be like the Diva or the Sigma. Then the only odd thing is saying Super on Genji is the, the final piece. But look, they needed a Genji player. You try out who you have. Uh, you don't you don't kind of hold any uh, bias over like, well, you know, they played Genji in the past. Like, it, it's all about how it plays now. It's a very different hero with a lot of the adjustments. From main tank difference to Genji difference in the blink of an eye, Matt. And the Uprising, they'll be kissing their bums those goodbye in a moment. If the shot can get up close to the point now, they switch to the Roadhog. And I mean, Punk is hoping to pressure shields and catch flankers with a hook, but Cherry just got bopped by Striker. That looked like it was a one clip. I mean, Jerry has nothing to say about that. When Striker has time to type in chat, the San Francisco Shock are on easy street right now. When Super gets hooked in and still Punk is going to go down, Shield Bash on Striker, he's able to recall out, and I have never seen the team more boomed right now than the Boston Uprising. When you pull out Roadhog, you're in trouble. Yeah, you are when, absolutely, when, when. your mental is absolutely kaput. And that's another round of the San Francisco Shock. The Boston Uprising, they are in dire straits. Yeah, well, when look the shock, I think we talk about them as they've looked really good here in the first half. It seems like they found a Genji option a little unorthodox in terms of super. Uh, but still, they look really good and coordinated with this dive. Uh, the only issue is, is if they get forced off of it. But with the way teams play, you want to kind of mirror. Maybe we don't see that happen for a bit. Uh, I do worry that if a team forces them off of it, where do they go with this lineup? Uh, I think... It is a bit one-dimensional, but Boston hasn't stopped it yet, and they've put up a, and they've they tried a lot. They've brought in Reaper, they brought in Roadhog. They weren't able to do it either of those times. I'm just going to put this out there, right? Uh, as the season goes on, we're going to have to start having conversations uh, about MVPs. Tell me, is there any player that not only gets Rollstar as a main tank but dominates like this on Genji? Oh wait, oh wait. Oh, he wait. hasn't played that much main tank this season. He, well, no, he's playing Genji. There's a chance that he he becomes more of a DPS than a main tank. I'll wait. Uh, okay. I'll give you I'll give you until after the break to come up with a rebuttal. Anyway, for the time being, ladies and gentlemen, I <laughs> I mean I want to hear from what our experts have to say. I I, I feel it's going to be likely along the same lines what I've been saying. But there's plenty to dig into here. Is the San Francisco shock and making a Genji tracer composition work? Let's now go to our game break and hear what our experts have to say on this shocking. And we'll see you for map three on the other side. Coca Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
two. Welcome to the Game Break presented by Pringles, Wavy, Zoe, Costa and Reinforce here at your service. And uh, there's a lot to unpack, quite frankly. A lot of questions, a lot of excitement coming into this after we saw the starting six. Uh, Super decided to play Genji because why not? And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think that just just goes to show how versatile uh, and deep the roster of the San Francisco Shock really is. I, I don't know about deep. I would just say uh, how willing they are to mm. give their players the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I, th I think the worst thing to come out of this is all the other players <laughs> that are saying though. that they have Genji in their pocket as well. Eamon, uh, I that's completely terrifying. believe him. Uh, absolutely. I, I can see that happening just in a week from now. Uh, Linkser, yeah, calling out. Trey Blazer, super. Wouldn't be the first time. I mean, know? a lot of main tanks have good Genjis, though. So I'm not yeah. super surprised to see Super actually coming out and playing the Genji here. Because I think it's a well-known fact that if you're a main tank and you exceed on the Winston, your Genji is going to be top tier as well. So, what so I'm hearing I mean, is one of my best heroes is Genji as well, yeah. You want to encourage other main tanks to uh, take that Do you have a Genji, step? Johnny? Yeah, future talent takedown. I will show to you that I actually have a good Genji. Yeah, but you're playing against those plebs. So what does that prove? Oh, but yeah, we'll come. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, yeah, I mean, not sure I, I, that's, that's not my fault. That's your, your fault. That is true. That is uh, entirely on us. Uh, uh, <laughs> on us. Yeah, that, that's that. Well, but let's actually talk about the game, right? Uh, we did see Super uh, on Genji. He did go up against the Color Hex on Genji. Uh, What's a big takeaway here, Costa? Uh, how did you feel about uh, Super's Genji? Oh, I, this is I, pretty damning. <laughs> this is... All right, so Super... I want to go into this. Super did have the better Genji than Color Hex, but I don't think the Genji is where we're seeing the major difference. Super is pretty much just running around. His team is taking control of this match, and he feels like he has freedom. I, I'm surprised he's a limbs per Dragon Blade. Uh, as high as they are. I feel like every time he pulls it, he's so scared to dash in and like try and kill everybody. He is playing it smart, but he's also not having big uh, big impact blades. Uh, it's It's been interesting, but I think you really have to look elsewhere when you're looking at the difference in this match of why it has been so one-sided. I think it's really funny. Uh, Sideshow also tweeted out that he can literally see Super's brain working when he's playing <laughs> that Genji in real time. So that is quite funny. Now, apart from, uh, of course, our Genji head-to-head, -head, which, as you said, that wasn't really the difference maker. Uh, we also saw uh, another thing, uh, another different look from the San Francisco Shock, which is Violet on that brig. Uh, what does that tell you for the future of that team? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the first one to notice. Captain Planet also mentioned it on Twitter as well, that Violet is actually playing the Brigitte now for this team, where, as in the past, we probably would have expected Moth to pick up that role. So I think this is actually quite telling that they are going to play Violet and Twilight moving forward as the duo. So Violet playing Brigitte for the first time here now, and this could actually continue moving forward, not only against the Boston Uprising. So maybe they're just using Super's Genji as a bit of a distraction to throw <laughs> off uh, future opponents of the fact that they are playing uh, Violet on that Brigitte. Now, uh, I, I do want to discuss who has been the difference maker, as we uh, said. Now, for the third time, I think uh, it wasn't necessarily Super or Color Hex. Uh, which players did stand out to you, Costa? It, it has to be the striker on the, on the Tracer. I think Josh also made a great tweet of saying this is like training weights for striker. It's like as if you're playing alone. So Stryker is just putting in so much work. He's been all over Jerry. Jerry isn't known as much for his Tracer play, and Stryker's really pr proving a point in this match. He's just everywhere. He's getting picks after picks. He's applying so much pressure. And on top of that, Smurf. I think Smurf and Stryker are working so well in tandem, creating this like massive difference in like how much pressure they can apply, and that is why we see Super you know, excelling on this Genji. Right, so uh, for our crunch time presented by Pringles Way, we do actually want to take a closer look at that Tracer versus Tracer head-to-head -head reinforce. Yeah, and I mean, this is the impact of Tracer shown in, uh, in statistically uh, speaking as well. So here you can really get a sense of what is happening. You can see that the final blow is 8 for Striker. He's really proving a point here. 18 eliminations as well on that Tracer. So I think that this is the matchup that you really have to look at in this matchup. I think you have to consider Genji as a bit of an auxiliary component to these compositions that sometimes can pop off with a Dragon Blade. And yes, you can brawl a little bit more, but for the most part, it is what we've talked about already this game break. It, it is about the Winston and the Tracer combining forces and 
really having a good impact at winning the shield war and the poke battle and then taking space based on that right so i think it's really telling the same story as well that it is up to the tracer matchup and then it is up to the main tank matchup as well to really adjust the space and then set up your genjis for success so keep an eye out for striker in the second half and the impact he has our third map coming up is going to be route 66 and uh, as far as i know there is no substitution being made from either of those teams what does that do to the mental state of a team uh, when they do face off against a team which yeah fair enough is known to be a very very strong team and one of the top teams of the league but also then they pulling something like putting super on a genji you, you know i actually have to say here costa before before yeah. i let you go on that i have to say that like if you are a player in boston uprising's shoes now you sort of need the epiphany required to even tap into the opportunity of playing better in the second half. Because if the players aren't really ready to take on the fact that they can beat this shock team with Super playing the Genji, and maybe they should actually, you know, step up to the plate and abuse some of the mistakes that are actually happening in this slower tempo game. But, you know, it's so easy if you're not even aware of that mental plane or space to begin with to even get out of that dump, which is the bad mental game from the Boston Uprising. So I don't even know if they have the perspective required to really step up now in the second half and take down Super Skenji. Yeah, I, I really want to just add on real quick as well. I think the Roadhog on the second, uh, on the second defense by the Boston Uprising on defense is just, that's a really bad look. I don't think that's ever a long-term solution. I think that shows the mentality. It's really on the coaches right now to rally the players. They need to at least have a better look. You, I don't want to go into this map and just see the same defeated Boston Uprising we saw on Hanamura. Well, let's see if they can uh, step it up or if Super's Genji will reign supreme on Route 66. We'll find out in just a second. For now, we're heading into a very quick break and then we're back with all the action. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League, and by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch League. After a halftime break, we had a chance to reset and reestablish expectations for this series because for many, they yeah. probably will have changed. We saw uh, the, the Super Genji, we all astral projected into a realm that consisted only of his colossal forehead. <laughs> and I can say that because I'm qualified to uh, make that uh, assertion. Yeah. Four gold medals, like a true Four Olympian, an American hero, future Old Spice model, yeah. Super has it all. Just just like how you would brag about in, in your ranked games. Uh, you know, the four <laughs> gold medals uh, for Super there. Uh, I think if you were to do like a a fair assessment of how he played in the, the first half, uh, he played really safe. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. He doesn't need to be the playmaker on this team with how good Smurf and Striker are. Uh, his mechanical skill, like being able to finish people off, like the dashes. Uh, there was one towards the end of Hanamura where uh, he dashed in front of the Roadhog, got the deflect. Like, it hasn't been bad. Like, would you say he's like the top Genji in the league in terms of mechanics? No. Would you say he's near the bottom? Probably not either uh, from what we've seen. The blades is probably the biggest thing uh, with how effective blades have been for a lot of other Genjis. Uh, the blades just need to be better, I think. Uh, but he's building the blades quick. Uh, so, uh, I think it's been pretty good so far for the Shock, and I think it may be their best Genji look. I know a lot of people were like, uh, how how in a, in a world is, like, Super's Genji better than Rascal's? It's like, well, maybe it's not better mechanically, but maybe the style in which Super is playing fits better with what the Shock are doing. Yeah, or at least, yeah, around the strategy that they want to uh, apply yeah. in, this, in this particular series. Route 66 uh. is going to be our third map, and... I kind of like that Johnny pointed out here just how important the main tank play and the tracer play is going to be on well, this map. And Strike has been uh, pretty scary all series long. I also like watching Johnny and then uh, every other uh, you know, main tank player on Twitter. They they magically all have a good Genji now. I know you've been playing Orisa for a few months and now everybody's got a good Genji just trying to get off the, the Orisa bandwagon. I'm sure. Yeah. Fusions is gonna be like, hey, get me all, get me off of these tanks, put me on Genji. I, I can hit Trill somewhere, saying, uh, you could have, could have, could have really done this earlier, guys. Thanks. <laughs> um, right. So yeah, this looks. I mean, the Genji looks fine. I mean, we, we talk about that bunch. We'll keep an eye on it. But uh, again, it's it's my, now my focus. Uh, uh, now that we've established that Super can do his job, uh, my focus is definitely going to be more towards other aspects of the team here. Boston want to play a brawl composition. They want to play it close here. They're going to obviously... Anytime you see this Lucio Moira set up, you know that they're here to throw hands, baby! <laughs> they're going to have to... St they did this a little bit on Hanamura. They were able to stop a little bit of it. Yep. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do it now. Uh, as, uh, San Francisco, nothing really changes. They go with the dive yet again. I'm sure Super and Kale have a good idea that they're inside of there. Super now spots everybody. Yeah, Smurf actually spotted it out. He jumped sort of sideways and, and looked straight down the train cart. So we could see what Boston were playing. Twilight's down early on here, kind of forced out of position. Jerry still, though, is forced back. And Boston, I would have thought they'd want to be playing on the low ground on the card here, but they are... They do. They've just been forced into, uh, you know, the sides. They're going to be able to get control now. Do you lose Treyovin? Smurf will fall at the hands of Jerry. Now it's how do you get this back if you're the Shock? How do you get the cart going again? Nice right, finish. Boston may have had someone out of position there and wanted just to make sure they're all uh, grouped up. Or they were peeling uh, and they wanted to stay as a unit. Either way, yeah, I just figured they'd feel a little bit more front and center. So they actually give up the corner. Not entirely, but we may see like a like a cold charge set up here on the high ground by Fusions. Yeah, they want to drop down and they just want to fight together. I like this composition. It's a nice little adjustment. So far, it's worked really well. Jerry's very good at coming out of... Uh, Wraith Walk or it, out of his uh, shadow step there with one shot and a melee. And it worked on Hanamura, but for whatever reason, it worked and they never went back to it. Yes. Uh, they, they went back to it on their attack in overtime. We, saw, we thought they should have played it on defense like they're doing now. I, I, yeah, I thought they should have done it on defense as well. Uh, it was just really odd they decided not to. Choi now switches off of Sigma and goes to D.Va. 
Uh, this will allow the defense matrix to try and help their backline a bit. Well, it's, it's also to keep Smurf alive a little bit longer, right? Just to prolong the Winston uh, against the Reaper. mionbong has gone down early. Here and Striker has a pulse bomb here. I don't even know what he was looking at when he got that stick, but he connected it sure enough. Fusions went low, and a Discord on Montalahex now means that he yeah, would want to make himself scarce. San Francisco come out with the answer, and it's just a small tweak in composition. I would say as well, like, we focused a lot on how Super has played in terms of Genji, but the dive has just been so clean for the Shock. Like, so coordinated, like, they're always in the perfect position. It's really been uh, the, the most beautiful thing to watch in the game today. Yep. Probably, I mean, well, hell, the way the first two games went all day, uh, is how, how good this team is with their dive. And we were sort and, of discussing this in the break, Matt, that it's really the amount of space that's been created for Super that allows him to, to get so many of these kills, especially with his Dragon Blade uh, maybe being a weaker part of his yeah. repertoire. And that's the fact why he's doing it. Yes, uh, Smurf putting on a ton of pressure on the Winston and then Striker on Tracer. Uh, they've just been a crazy good combo today. Striker. I mean, the win condition here is him to pick off a backliner. Oh, Zaya Bubble got used early. Looks like it actually got used on Myeongbong, if I'm not mistaken. Fusion's just got completely ruined in that fight, and now Boston are severely out of position. They'll try and stand their ground for their composition is good at doing, and with the Coalescence, they can probably hang around in this fight a little bit longer, at least. Strike is forced to back up, and he has hit another Pulse Bomb, and now a Sound Barrier gets deployed by the Uprising. They want to stick around, and it's going to be a Transcendence here forced out of the shock. Jerry wants to push forward, though, but eventually realizes he needs to back out as that Transcendence fades, and he's stuck coming oh. out of Wraith Walk. Striker gets two with that kill, and they're both DPS. Yeah, and they were going to start to back out of this shock because they end up losing Smurf, but now that you get two kills there with the Pulse Bomb, what? Striker... That's four. And, and Super pulls out the blade because he thinks they needed it, but Striker just kills bro. everybody. So, but this is not time for show and tell. Striker's out there getting four kills, and he's trying to steal his thunder. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you're... I mean, you don't really need the blade when your Tracer's that effective, right? Okay, your Tracer gets really four matter. kills, and you pull out a blade. Yep. Are you trying to cut the celebration cake? Well, to be fair, when he pulled the blade out, there were still too many, two players alive, but Striker had killed them in such quick succession that there was nobody left. Super was nervous when he found out we were casting this game because he knew uh, I'd rip him a new one. But I mean, he's from Philly and look at his family. I mean, he's used to getting a lot of flack, so he can handle it. The one for one trade here, Kalex is down, Striker pulls foul of a fire strike and there's a self-destruct on the card. The Uprising though, were held out of the way for the most part, but Jerry going down at Twilight is an ill omen. Or a sick Reaper. Pick one. As the cart just continues to move here for San Francisco. Boston, they they know exactly what's coming, and they cannot stop it. Uh, regardless of the composition they've now switched to. So, uh, not looking good for Boston in this one thus far. Coming into the next fight, uh, they probably want to get aggressive, maybe try and build up towards Sound Barrier, but the Rally and Transcendence available for the Shock. It's going to be difficult. Like, with the way the Ultimates are staggering out, Mitch, it's going to be difficult for the Uprising to win any fights here. I mean, Infusions just can't, I mean, get in position right now. Constantly pressured down by Smurf. And Smurf is really hard for the Uprising to kill right now. Jerry isn't able to get damage down on him. If he's focusing on Smurf, who's being defense matrices, then uh, someone like Striker or Violet can pressure. Yeah, but I, they, you know, they try and get to the cart and, and stall it out and you know, maybe maybe gain some ultimate charge. They really get nothing there, boss. And, I mean, you, you get closer to Sound Barrier, but now Fusions has to switch off. And Fusions will play Winston, as this will be Rally used from Violet on the high ground. It's a shock trying to control the space. There's the stick. It gets punked. That's such a high-value target. Super's able to chime in, finding the kill on Color Hex. I mean, he has focused the enemy Genji a lot. Another kill, though, on an enemy DPS in the Boston Uprising now are licking their wounds. Jerry's the first one to be able to step up here, and it's Wraith Walk that has to be used just to hang around on the cart. Sound Barrier now, but the Shock reply with a Transcendence of their own, and Jerry has fallen rather quickly. He was the first to step up, after all. The Fusions get stuck with the Discord Orb and tries to roll around, buy some time, it's not to be. Smurf is eluded briefly by the fade from Myeongbong, but all good things must come to an end here, and Jerry pops out into nuclear fallout, essentially. A minute 57 on the clock for San Francisco. But it, it's difficult to usually run this map all the way down. To do it with a minute and 57 is a ton of time. Uh, and Boston, I think they, they have to just be really defeated by how this match has gone today. Uh, they probably thought that they were going to be able to force the shock out of this type of composition. 
and at moments it looked like they were. But the Shocks just doubled down, and they just decided that they were going to be the better team in terms of coordinating their dive, where Boston, I mean, Mitch, they haven't really gone back to dive since the first map, right? No. They just don't want to... They haven't gone it at all. They don't want to try and match this whatsoever. They're well, trying what's... to counter it, and it's still not doing much of anything. What's frustrating them, I think, is that the counter dive from the Shock has been incredibly effective at just neutralizing their backline, right? Yeah. And you cannot play dive tanks really with Lucio Moiri here. Um, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's really not all that durable. You really want to have a Zenyatta of your own to pressure down. If you're going to play that kind of dive to at least have some, you know, uh, pressure on the enemy tanks here. So they realize that their counter dive isn't as good as San Francisco's. Their, their space creation for their backline or the peel wasn't there. Like Super was able to kill Two supports with one slash of the blade on Oasis, and Boston haven't wanted to go back to that at all. Don't really blame them, but this counter composition, all San Francisco did was add a diva, and all of a sudden they they have the answer. Yes, like that's 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 scary for Boston if San Francisco can adapt so fast, man. Uh, I think it is just how good the shock are at inserting new players and adapting. Because also you have, I mean, Twilight's been on the team for a while, and he's played more as of late. But he hasn't been here for a very long time. Uh, Super, obviously, playing Genji has not been here for a long time. Like, being, uh, seeing them coordinate all of this so fast, to where Boston, this has basically been, you know, outside of, like, Punk, their roster the entire season. For them not to be able to have that type of coordination already, yes. uh, is it not good? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, maybe the team still has some foundation to build, and in the era of hero pools where, you know, the composition gets switched up so much, and Super just got served his just desserts there. Myeongbong deserves a little bit of uh, limbering up there. Yeah, he, he, he was he was kind of playing with Myeongbong yeah. there. He thought he was going to definitely kill him. Yeah. That uh, did not happen. And it made him sad, as he's now stated. But it doesn't even matter. The shot just win the rest of it anyway. Like, there's not even a, a threat. <laughs> Just right, so now, chat. Like he's so not, now he's we get uh, now we get McCree here from Jerry. Uh, you could go like a full anti dive if you wanted to. If you're Boston, maybe you play Brig, you play the McCree. Like you play the Lucio because the sound barrier is really good against Blade. But are you really worried with how Super's played with the Blades as far about them? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be that worried whatsoever. All right. Well. Myeongbong's ready for a coalescence, but if he sees Super come over the horizon, you best believe he's getting beamed down like Goku versus Freezer. All right, there's a pulse bomb. Nice kick. Color Hex goes down to that one, and that's the risk. Lingering so close, that Super goes ham. Finds himself three kills. That, honestly, that looked clean. Real Kinda clean. clean. But it, it, you're, I don't like the comp, I think, from Boston, man. Like, I, I don't what think you need the Lucio. Like, the, the Lucio, McCree. the Lucio, I, I actually like the McCree. I think okay. the McCree edition's good. I think if you wanted to move beyond, like, the, the Lucio here to speed boost the Reinhardt in a position, but the way Route 66 is with so much verticality, there's not really a great spot for him to do so. So you may as well play, like, control on the cart with the rig and play around your McCree. What Super looking for? Be hungry. And he's trying to carve up some ham! And, and they haven't even been able to coordinate, Mitch. Like, we talked about how they struggle to coordinate. Like, where are they going? Like, when, when they go into the garage, like, they're just getting pinched from all directions at that point. So there's nowhere for them to go. Well, they're like, trying to set up a concave so they can actually use this, this Reaper effectively. Like, that Jerry actually gets decent target selection and Fusions gets value out of his shield. It just takes too much damage open. on the way in. Yeah. I mean, you have a Lucio. Like, I understand why they want to do this, right? Yeah. Now they have the Diva, so they, they want to peel for the backline better. Uh, and they also want to prolong that Reinhardt shield, right? But look at this. The Uprising are not in a position right now to make the best use of this composition. Oh. I mean, nice Troy, yeah, Troy goes down to a, a bomb, but, you know, you take or leave those, right? You can't really count on that one. With the Transcendence now, when Super has a position, he's able to double down now and go more. In. Really? Okay. Here's the Blade. Oh, give me more! Oh, he gets himself three. Not to be, though. Couldn't quite find the 4K. Jerry is, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's Groundhog Day for him right now. He is caught in some sort of, uh, I don't know, some, some quantum well, loop. Some temporal stasis. I, I, I do think you're starting to see him look a little bit more comfortable with the ultimates. Like, I think there is probably a lot of nerves, especially because he knows, especially with Krusty, that... Uh, if he messes up, he may not be in for much longer. So playing a little bit safe, but now you're starting to... I mean, look at this! Yeah, now he's spawn camping on Genji. 
in Super 2020. Super spawn camping the Boston Uprising on Genji. Wow. You know, uh, I mean, Doctor Strange saw 7 billion uh, different realities, and this was zero of them. Absolutely zero. Here's your overtime. Kalahex now with the Dragon Blade. Ah, oh, he's looking for whatever he can get at this stage. And he finds himself the one on the Violet, but it's a trade immediately. Smurf. Super's gonna have Genji. another blade. Smurf? Opening up a little bit of room on the cart. He were prime or hoping maybe for an environmental kill. Oh, Halo! So good. Yep, he's earned his. He probably can Halo stay makes alive it back though. On, though yeah? yep. He'll stick to the side of the canyon and keep moving up. Troy Hobart's going to have to reposition. All right, so you'll wait here for San Francisco. You're going to get Violet back in the mix because he's got a rally. You'll have Transcendence as well. And mind you, the Shark could finish the map. So the Uprising need to cap this and then still go the distance. So this will be the rally to open things up. Drop down, both Wrecking Balls are there and Super's Dragon Blade now looking to end the round. Halo is down, one more slash and Myeongbong is his. Striker gets the Pulse Bomb kill on Colorhex. A late confession perhaps to try and deal with the Kenji, but it just wasn't enough. And that'll be it. A pretty uh, quick and dirty affair from the San Francisco Shock. They will take the series 3-0. to zero. And I think you see how Boston struggled with the dive throughout the series. Not necessarily Super's Genji. Uh, it, it, was, it was good. Uh, I think we can establish that. But just the dive as he gets to play the game again, Super. But uh, as the dive was just really good from the Shock, you saw Boston try and make adjustments. They tried to play Reaper compositions with Reinhardt and Lucio and more of a rush style. There at the end, Color Hex brings out the Torbjorn uh, to kind of deter the dive. They tried McCree. Uh, they, they didn't really go to the bring that much because they kind of valued the speed boost to get the Reinhardt in close. Uh, but everything they threw at it did not work. Uh, the Shock's dive was just way too impressive today. Yeah, and Super ends that map with 16 final blows and four deaths with 40 eliminations. So he and Striker heavily involved in a lot of these kills they combined for, for 30 final blows overall. I, he looked way more comfortable on that map than the first two. Yeah, I mean, he started to, he started, we, we mentioned, like, ah, okay, he's actually starting to look kind of clean here. Some of his combos uh, and his blades, I think, which is where you're most critical of, Matt, uh, started to look quite good there. So San Francisco showed that while this may not be a thing that we can expect, you know, to see tons more in the future, we have our proof of concept now. Super steps into an official match, he plays Genji, and he complements this dive really well. Well, that's what I would say is that the dive was so strong, and, uh, and although Boston, not one of the best teams in the league, not being able to stop it, uh, you will see this, I think, again from the Shock. Yeah. San Francisco, whether they've settled on their uh, Genji player or it's just part of the rotation, Super now is getting a bit more play times. We saw him start to sort of, you know, take a, a back seat to Smurf uh, playing that main tank, but Super is the kind of player, maybe he, you know, begins to evolve. I mean, people have used the term uh, reverse hydration a little bit here, but maybe he... Reverse you know, hydration. Is that, is that what, I mean, which is dehydration, obviously, yeah. but he's able to find him, his niche in the San Francisco Shock, as Genji would have been the, the literal, the literal last hero any of us would have expected him to be on, but here we are. It's time to have a look at our player of the match presented by Xfinity. And Matt, I, I think this one is uh, a pretty easy pick. Yeah, we gave it to Super here. Uh, I think you could have given it. Uh, I think Smurf definitely deserves uh, a lot of the love for how the Shock played today. I think his uh, his play on Winston, and I think just playing Winston into things like the Reinhardt rush comp uh, with Reaper in the mix, uh, Torbjorn there at the very end, McCree uh, is very difficult. But what the Shock did not have in the Summer Showdown, which was kind of like their downfall, was a Genji look. We had uh, the piece from Moth earlier where he talked about, like, they didn't really value Genji that much. They took some time in the off week. They figured out who was their best Genji player. And now they have that, uh, where it's obviously a little bit weird for everybody to say Super is the choice right now. But he looked really good in this series. You can say he was, I mean, it's, it's odd to say. I think Color Hex, uh, we, we've seen him play really good Genji in the past. But in this series, I think the Super definitely was the better one. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm interested to, to get a little bit more insight from San Francisco on, on why. Yeah. Because obviously, like, a lot of their players were pretty vocal about, you know, this being a little bit more of a comical decision. Uh, either right. they were hamming it up just to try and... I don't know. I mean, it, I don't think Boston needed to be lulled into a false sense of security. I don't think they... they feel it's also easier for Super to look better playing with the players that he's playing with yes. and how coordinated they are rather than Color Hex, right? So you can't comparison, like, uh, put them side by side one to one because Color Hex's team was not able to coordinate much of anything in terms of dive. They went away from it for a while, so he's, like, playing alone and... 
uh, it was very difficult for him today. Yeah, so there's not a lot of space being created for, for Carla Hex to get stuff done on Genji. You saw the amount of times that he would go in, and all of a sudden, he's hit with a Brick Shield Bash, and he's dead. You know, um, Super Shield was Bash, to, Discord, yeah, and he's gone, yeah. All that stuff, like we saw before, even that last fight of Route 66, Carla Hex goes in with the blade. He has a sound barrier on him as well. So you're thinking, okay, He's looking pretty durable right now. This is the equivalent of charging in, at least for a few seconds, under a transcendence. And he still gets shut down because it's immediate peel uh, from the shock. The turn around. There's a shield bash, and then all of a sudden, Smurf with Primal Rage is in his way. Super is able to get a lot more done, uh, and not all of it is off the back of what he himself has achieved. So, yeah, I I'm glad we got a chance to sort of give honorable mention there as well because San Francisco are unlike any other team when it comes to peeling like that. And even right. though. Boston tried to play the safest possible support lineup, like literally supports with self-peel. They were not able to prevent, you know, someone like Super or Striker from, from messing them right up there. So that think, says a lot about, uh, you know, the space that's created for backliners between these two teams. I agree. I think Boston also needs to look themselves in the mirror a little bit and say, hey, we need to be better as a team overall. Like, we need to have better coordination. We have to be able to outdive some of yeah. these teams that you're not going to be able to get wins uh, you know, in the next few weeks if you can't have a look like that. That's right. Well, uh, there it is. Uh, we put the cap on this match, except for one special treat, of course. It's always a pleasure. Uh, but now we have an opportunity here from Super with Zoe. Indeed. Thank you so much, guys. Super, congrats, and thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, no problem. All right, so straight out of the gate, let's address the uh, elephant in the room. Uh, you're playing Genji now. <laughs> Was yeah. this a long time in the making or just a spontaneous stroke? Of uh, okay, I mean, this kind of goes back a while. Like, okay, so... Where do I even start? I guess it kind of started back in the summer showdown. And Just it a week was ago, like, let's calm down. yeah, I mean, it's kind of a long story. We talked about Genji, we didn't even have a Genji player go in. And then it was like, well, maybe I thought maybe I could try it. And then we tried it and it ended up working out for a little bit. But then we thought it wasn't enough time in the summer showdown. So we kind of pushed it back. And now here we are. All right. So what, was there any pushback from fellow DPS players in your team? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think so. I think we all kind of agree that it's just a team game and we got to do what we got to do. So that's, you know, that's that's kind of how it is sometimes. All right. Uh, we, we did see uh, some other uh, changes happening within your team. Uh, Moth hasn't been playing since week 21. Instead, we saw Violet today also on the brig. Um, what kind of brought these changes about? Uh, I mean, it's kind of just different play styles, stuff like that. Things that, you know we thought we could change about the team, things that we could make better. And, um, you know, it ended up it ended up working out for us, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, at this point, it just looks like any of your players can fill any role. Doesn't matter if it's what yeah. they usually it just somehow works out. So that's uh, scary, to say the least, for every other team in the league. Um, how, how, how much pressure did you feel playing Genji? I mean, was there any pressure at uh, all to, to perform? I don't, I mean, I don't know. It, you know, it's definitely a weird experience for me because I don't, I don't really play Genji in matches. That's kind of a new experience. Uh, but I, I don't really get nervous or get scared about matches. I kind of just go into it. I mean, I've been practicing it all week. Um, surprised more people didn't really put the pieces together. To be honest, I thought it was obvious it was going to happen. <laughs> but you know, that's neither here nor there. I just, I, I, I don't really get nervous. No, to answer your question, no. Well, I wasn't really asking if, if there was a uh, nerves coming in, more that you felt the pressure since no. I believe uh, maybe the pressure was more on Colorhex uh, in that regard since <laughs> he had to face off against your Genji. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I guess I had, you know, big shoes to fill and I think I did a, a, a decent job at least, you know, maybe a good job, some would say. Um, or a fantastic match, job, way. actually, <laughs> you know, some might yeah. say. Uh, now, of course, the big question is, uh, is, is there going to be more of this? Uh, are you just stepping in for Genji, or are there other DPS heroes uh, on the horizon which you're trying to? Ah, uh, who who knows? You know, who knows what the future holds? It's true. It's, no it's a mystery. It is. I, 2020 has been I mean, a, a very curious year so far, and yeah. you playing Genji has been part of that. <laughs> I mean, I, I I've only been practicing Genji, so it's not like there's really anything else that I know of. I mean, you know, who knows? Like I said, who knows? Um, but this could be a Genji only thing, could be a whole different thing, you know? Well, we'll find out soon. Uh, can't wait to see you guys on stage again. Super, thank you so much for joining us and shedding some light on the mysteries. 
Yes, thank you for having me. Of course, always a pleasure. Now, we're heading into a very quick break and then we're back with the last match of the day. The LA Valiant will go up against the Atlanta Reign. <laughs> 